rankings and we give you glory tonight, God, because God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you hallelujah that we could ask or think we thank you tonight because God you're getting ready to move in us tonight God hallelujah lives shall be changed tonight marriages shall be healed tonight hallelujah people shall be healed tonight their hearts their minds shall be healed tonight and father we thank you oh God hallelujah God we give you the glory hallelujah God we give you the honor tonight because God we know that you're about to turn things around we know that you're getting ready Ready to do some great things. We know that you're getting ready to heal us, mold us, and make us to be what you would have us to be. And Father, we thank you because God, hallelujah, you're getting ready to do a new thing in us tonight. You're getting ready to do a new thing in our relationships and our marriages. Hallelujah, tonight. And God, we thank you for shifting it. We thank you for turning it around, God. We thank you in advance, God. Huh? Your people shall receive huh? answers tonight. Some of them are looking for answers tonight. A lot of people are, ah, shit, need healing in their marriages. They need healing in their homes. Uh, they need healing, period, God, in their hearts, understanding. Uh, they need understanding tonight, God. We thank you because you're going to use us tonight to give understanding, clarity to the people of God. And hallelujah. And if you can say it with me, just say, amen. I receive it. And glory to God. Woo, glory to God. I'm so excited. Amen. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. Woo, come on, come on, come on. In here. Ah, yeah, you got it. I feel like the preacher that's uh that always walks in late. Yeah. <laughs> you the preacher that walks in late. <laughs> the preacher that always walks in late. Yeah, y'all, y'all gotta y'all gotta excuse him. He always late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just doing stuff. I'm getting stuff set up here. Okay. <laughs> So, hey, listen, um, you're probably going to see my phone out because I can actually see comments and things rolling right. in. So, no, no worries if you see me look at my phone. If you have a question for us, definitely um, ask your questions. Um, <clears throat> you know, we want to be able to minister to you. Thank you so much for everybody who is currently tuning in. Tuning in. Thank you so much for Bobby Today. Yes. That is actually tuning in with us all the way from Nigeria. Woo! We have Miss uh, India King, who's actually tuning in also as well. God bless you, Miss India. God bless and I believe you. our pastor is currently watching. Pastor King. Pastor King is Theodore currently King. watching. Woo Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> He's currently watching with us. And we are so excited tonight. Thank you so much for uh, viewing and tuning in to our Love and Family Month. Man. Yeah. It has been an amazing month. It's been an uphill journey. <laughs> <laughs> every to me, every month is an uphill journey. And anytime mm -hmm. you can go from the beginning of the month to the end of the month and succeed and actually come out and you're still alive, yes, you're doing good. Yes, you're doing really that's good. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. So tonight, um, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed a few of the, uh, the worship videos that I got a chance to play a little bit while yeah. we was getting prepared and everything behind the scenes. I really thank God for Zoom because through Zoom, <laughs> we was able to start right on time, give you guys something to watch. Woo! And uh, we were still working out some stuff behind the scenes. Trying yeah. to get out. Listen, I was trying to piece myself together. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Deetra was still, they're just going to be honest. Deetra was still piecing herself together. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel was still, like I'm still I had, trying to piece myself together. Yeah, you still trying to piece yourself. He said, honey, go right on so you can greet the people because we ain't ready. That's right. I said, oh, okay. I was still trying to put an earring in. Mm -hmm. Just trying to put a little lip gloss or something on my yes. lips. You know, I was still trying to get me together, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have a great time on tonight. Yes. I probably should have put the camera right in front of the TV so that when I look over here, it looks like I'm looking at, <laughs> looking at the camera. Maybe, maybe, yeah, we have a whole it. studio set up in our home. <laughs> a lot of people don't know. They think we're at a, uh, like, we go to a separate location. No. We go from upstairs to downstairs. Mm -hmm. and that's, we pr purposely set up our home so we can be able to do ministry from home without an issue. And this was way before the pandemic yes. even happened. That's true. We um, were going live from home before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we used to have worship. Remember when we used to um, live in Hamilton? We used mm -hmm. to live in Hamilton, New Jersey. And we used to have worship time 
in our home, yes, in the living room. Mm-hmm. And your mom, mom said to us, <laughs> she said, what happened? Why don't you guys do that anymore? She sure did. Mm-hmm. So my mother-in-law, let me tell you something about my mother-in-law. She is so hilarious. Yes, she is. <laughs> I love this woman because she reminds me of myself. She's funny. And she's just straight to the point. She, mm-hmm. she don't really like, you know, beat around the bush. She is the bush. <laughs> <laughs> she don't beat around the bush. She like you, she going to tell you. If right. she don't like you, she going to tell, tell you me. that. You know, Absolutely. that's pretty much how I am. Mm-hmm. So they always say you marry your mother or you marry somebody like your, you know, you marry mm-hmm. somebody like your father, somebody like your mother that right. has that personality because a woman shapes for a young man what a real woman's supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. So your mother shaped you mm-hmm. to see what a real woman was supposed to look like. Yes. And, you know, even when you've dated before, mm-hmm. your mom will tell you, okay, Shannon, I don't like her, but you do what you want to do. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, my, my mom, she had a, a, a thing that she was like, mm, something about them, I really can't put my finger on it. <laughs> But yeah, but you go ahead. You do what you want to do because yeah. you know you you know you, you grow. You grow. <laughs> you gonna that's do it anyway. That I do appreciate about my parents. You know they'll give their opinion. They'll say yeah. what they believe that you should be doing. Uh-huh. But she says, and they, my father and my mother both say, listen. At the end of the day, you grow. You grow. You gonna do what you want to do you anyway. Do what you want to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about them. I was so nervous. The first time I met them. So mm. why don't you tell the people about um really because we we met in July of 2006. Well, we've been knowing each other. So why don't you oh, tell the people? Tell the people about us. Come on, Tom. I, I'm not no good storyteller like that. <laughs> well, okay, we met in we, 2014. We, was it 2014? It was like late 2013, going into 2014. Oh wow, it's been that long. Wow. Yeah, it yeah. really has been that long. Wow. We met on a um a taping. We were doing yes. a taping for a gospel show. Mm-hmm. And this wonderful hunk of love of mine. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank High you five. <laughs> yes. Although she chose somebody else over me at the time. <laughs> My head is no. really down. But she, <laughs> just, oh God. Is my no. neck still there, y'all? No. Okay. I came for your neck. Oh, yeah. It's still there, baby. It still looks I got good. a brace on it. Yeah. Keep me, keep me together. Keep me together. Keep me together. <laughs> no, but we didn't, we did meet, and um, I was in like with my wife. I was in like. So one of the things I think we wanted to point out tonight was that, you know, not only are you married to somebody and that you should love somebody, mm-hmm. but you should like them too. Because there's a bunch of folks I love, but I just do not like. <laughs> I think I caught the Holy Ghost just right there. You just said something. Yeah. That, to me, it, that is important. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like you should be in life more than you should be in love. Because when you like a person, mm-hmm. you're going to be very careful in your words. Yes. You're going to be careful in your actions. Yes. You're not going to say and do things that would cause the person that you like mm-hmm. to feel like you don't like them anymore Mm -hmm. because see i can i love a lot of people because hey first of all i want to make it to heaven yes okay that's my first thing i want to make it to heaven so i gotta love you regardless of what you did to me regardless of what you said about me i still have to what still got to love you i still gotta love you i got and and then wait a minute we're gonna put some ice on this cake okay go ahead i got to love you with the love of jesus come on okay so i gotta love you with the love of jesus i love my husband, but I like him more than I love him because my like holds my tongue. Mm, mm-hmm. My like makes me, when we get into a disagreement, mm-hmm. to say, honey, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to walk away <laughs> <laughs> because Deidre friend to say something she ain't got no business mm-hmm. saying. And before I hurt your feelings, mm-hmm. because I know what to say to hurt his feelings. He knows what to say to hurt mine. And that's one of the things that in a relationship, in your marriage, that you have to learn how to do. So we just talked about this last night. Yes, sir. Is that, um, you know, so me and my wife, uh, before I go into Honest Box, me and my wife have learned, even early on in our marriage, is that when we 
um, when we're bumping up against hands or heads and we, we're at an impasse, that's what's called an impasse. Um, when we're at an impasse, you know, some it, it seems like it's not going nowhere and you can't just come to that agree to disagree moment. Yeah. And so then what we begin to do right there is say, okay, you know what? We're not going to have it. We're going to pause this conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's circle back around it. And then when we're both level-headed, let's talk about it again then. That's right. And so then, you know, I really believe that that's helped out our marriage so much for the simple fact is that, you yeah. know, if you going off and she going off and y'all just, <laughs> yeah. y'all exchanging I mean, things. Yeah, honey, because mm -hmm. we... Because we both got slick tongues. <laughs> yes. I mean, slicker than slick, slick. Mm -hmm. And then he'll say something, and I'll be like, what? Let me tell you. So, you know, my head starts to go. <laughs> Fingers start to snap in my mm -hmm. head. Let me tell mm -hmm. you. know, I start getting there. So, we know that about each other. Right. So we because we like one another, we we put right. a we put a pause. Right. So before stuff. we say something to <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> end it all. <laughs> Cause that's exactly, honey. Cause that's what I'll be going for the juggler. Somebody <laughs> head coming off, and it won't be mine. <laughs> exactly. So before we end it all, let's table it. So it takes a big person, yes, to be able to say, "Hey, let's table this for right now. Mm -hmm. Circle back around it later." Mm -hmm. And it takes a bigger person, Stop you preaching, to be sir. able to say, "Okay, good. Let's let's table this for right now." And yes, let's. Um, circle back around this later and the most important thing that i learned is that put a time on it don't just say you're going to circle around it and then it'd be weeks later months later days later you know put a time on it so if i say hey you know what let's not talk about this for the rest of the night let's go back and let's go finish this tomorrow yes or hey you know what i'm not in my right head space mm -hmm. I, I like that word because you taught me that word head space <laughs> yeah i'm not in the right head space right now yeah so um why don't we do this let let let's table this for right now you know and i'm i'm actually really mad i'm upset so I need about right. a good two hours three hours four hours just to calm down and then we could talk about it then and so then that that's actually, I believe, helped us a whole lot. Right, because we look at our marriage as a huge dining table, a table where we dine, we fellowship, we laugh. Because if you think about it, and I don't like to say in the Black culture, I don't like, in families, the dining room table is where everybody knows your name. Dirty laundry comes out. At the dining room table. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about people at the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And it's always over mm -hmm. a meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we we have learned to create a table in our marriage and say that we both have a tendency because we both like to cook. We cook so many different meals. So mm -hmm. we give each other a chance to taste test. But we put everything on the table. We cook it up and put it on the table. And that's how it is with our issues. We cook up these issues. We cook up these problems. These problems occur. But they find a way to sit on our table. Mm -hmm. And we tackle each plate at a time. Mm -hmm. We don't go and just pile our plate up. Because when you pile your plate up, you become overwhelmed. And you feel yes. like you have to eat everything. Right. Clear that table like that, you know. When you're when you're trying to to lose weight, they tell you to eat small meals, mm -hmm. six small meals a day. So when it's time for that real big meal, you're not even that hungry that you can actually eat half mm -hmm. or twenty five percent of what you would normally eat on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is with us. We put everything on the table, and we just tackle little bit by little bit. And there's no race mm -hmm. on how fast the table gets cleared. Mm -hmm. How the place get clear? We just take a look. Take we look at it as because we have a lifetime. Yes. To iron our issues out, we have a lifetime to do this. So, mm -hmm. one of the things that I like about our marriage is um, when we met. Like you said, you was in strong like of me. Yes. I was in strong like of you. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I did. I didn't marry Shannon right away. I went off and got married. To someone else um it was because i had a different expectation of like love friendship commitment mm 
Yes. I had um, I had my own vision of it, my own version of it. I know what I was taught and whatever I was taught, I added on to what I taught myself what I wanted. And something that I try to tell a lot of women, it's not about what you want, it's what God wants for you. Because what I want may not be good for me. Yes. What I feel like I need may not be what I need. Yes. And if you would begin for my single sisters and even my single brothers, if you yes. would stop trying to tell God what kind of woman you want. Mm. Yeah, true. Stop trying to tell God what kind of man you want mm -hmm. and just say, God, whatever you have for me, it may not be what I feel as though I deserve and what I want, but you know what's best for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going because I've had I've heard women in, even in my childhood they literally would tell God oh yeah I told God I want this kind of man and I want him to have a full head of hair and I want him to be uh, endowed in this area endowed mm -hmm. in that area mm -hmm. endowed here and there and I want him to be a lawyer and I want him and can I tell you something I don't mean no harm mm -hmm. no disrespect to nobody but them same women is 50 60 70 almost 70 years old and none of them never got married. Wow. They never got married. They mm -hmm. still sitting, looking around, twirling their thumbs, hoping and praying they get a husband. Wow. Got a whole bunch of kids, but they ain't got no husband. Oh, that's terrible. Wow. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Got a whole, whole bunch, bunch of kids, kids. Yeah. But I ain't got no husband. Well. So that goes to show you their, their expectations was not God's expectation. Mm -hmm. Their vision of what they wanted wasn't what God had for them. And what happened was when, because one thing you got to remember, the devil knows what you want. Mm -hmm. He knows what you like. We're mm -hmm. not praising the devil, but we're trying to make you aware that the devil does know because you talk too much. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the things that um, you know, our counselors, our marriage counselors told us. Oh, was that <laughs> so marriage one, counseling the best thing that's right so if you're single and looking to get married trust me make sure you find a good marriage counselor Amen. if you can find a a, a a christian marriage counselor that'd be great um but you definitely going to need some counseling because you got two different and i want to cover this tonight too yes. uh, um that you have two different families that two different people grew up two different ways and y'all trying to bring that thing together. That is so difficult <laughs> because me, me and my wife still today oh still go back and forth about certain things. And I just be like, okay, well, you know, I wasn't brought up to do that. So how I'm supposed to know? Well, you did this, you did this. So I just thought you should know. Oh, wait a minute, tell them about the... <laughs> Meet me at the time! <laughs> oh, God. This is why you need a marriage counselor. Because I'm trying to tell you. No. Like he said, when you're brought up two different ways. Mm -hmm. My husband was brought up one way and his mother and father did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I was brought up another way and my parents did a fantastic job with me. We don't discredit how we were brought up because right. we both were brought up excellent. excellent. Yes, we were. Okay. Absolutely. His mother and father... I would not trade this black man in for no other man. <laughs> and I've yes, and, and 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 I've dated, I've dated, and I've married, and God knows I ain't never in my <laughs> life have met a man like this. But like I said, it was my expectation. Right. And so that's one of the things that we that we learned in marriage counseling is that sometimes we have expectations, and you have to be able to go to your spouse or go to your loved one and uh, let them know what those expectations are. Um, I just let, let ladies know that guys are not mind readers. You have to open up your mouth. You have to tell them exactly what you mean, you exactly what you, you want please. done. You can't just assume. So leading that into this. <laughs> So tell <laughs> I'm about to tell <laughs> on you. I'm telling you. Okay. Dang. So anyway, so let me just kick it off with the funny part first. Okay. So I'm sitting at home. <laughs> so this is when the pandemic hit, right? So I'm sitting at home. I'm playing video games. And this and that happened a couple of times beforehand, but just recently. It's in the home, playing my video game, work at well, just ended. I'm you know sitting at home or whatever, playing video games. 
And so next thing you know, my wife walks in the house. You about to lose your marriage. I can't believe this. <laughs> you ain't come. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, time, out, time out, Rev. Time out. I was living. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I was living. And then I was also frustrated. I had been at work all day. I'm tired. <laughs> and for some of y'all who don't know, I have two businesses. I have a cleaning service mm -hmm. and I have a home care business. And I'm going to tell you something. That teacher works both of them mm -hmm. daily. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I came home frustrated. <laughs> Put my head talk about me. Yeah, so I'm playing the game. I'm like, oh, all right, time out. What? All right, oh, all right. So he's like, you need to be meeting me at the door. Every time I pull up this and that, da, 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 meet me at the door. I want you to walk me in the house. And this and that. So I was like, okay, so of course I'm thinking because I've never done this before. Uh, when my parents and my mom come home, when she got to the house, she just walked in the house. Anybody else, my aunts and cousins and everything else, and they come home, they walk on in the house, you know, oh, whatever, you know, just they ain't no thing. All right, you made it home or whatever. Okay, cool. But she was expressive <laughs> oh, I sure in was. her I sure meaning was. I was. of you should be meeting me at the door, this and that, da, da, da. And I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> no, I for real. And I don't have no problem. That's one thing I love about our marriage. Yes. Because we say sorry to one another. And I I, I will admit I was wrong. Because at that time, I was frustrated. Mm -hmm. I wasn't frustrated with him. Right. I was just frustrated, period. Mm -hmm. I had been through a lot during that day. And then I came home and I took my frustration out on him. Even though, yeah, I wanted him to meet me at the door, but it was a better way to handle it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't handle it right. I just got upset mm -hmm. because I was just frustrated with the whole nation, just the whole nation. So after she had explained to me that, you know, hey, some things has happened to me, you know, while I'm living alone, everything else, I've been attacked and this and that and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I just feel safe right. when I pull up and when, when I pull up, you know, just stop what you're doing, meet me outside and just walk me in the house or watch me come inside the house or something like that. Yeah. So after she explained it like that, notice I said after she explained it like that, mm -hmm. because it was a whole world to get around to that right there. And so, and so then I was able to say, you know, honey, absolutely. I will meet you at the door every single night you come home from work, because if that's going to make you feel safe, then yes, absolutely. I'm going to make sure I meet you at the door. And I believe I've been doing it ever since, right? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I was looking at some of the people. Oh, I, no, no. I want to make sure we recognize we have our um, one of our members on, Minister Henry. Yeah, Minister Henry is on. Yes. Mm -hmm. First Lady Beth is on. Yes. Uh, Aunt uh, Marcelle. Mm -hmm. Yes. God bless you. Thank you so much. And we just want to make sure we recognize these people. We want to make sure that we say thank you. God bless yes. everyone. Really. And bad. there is a few more people that's watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Beatrice, God bless you as well. She just commented and said, bless you as Hi, well. Hi, Pastor. That's my girl. I love her. Mm. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Pastor. She is so sweet. Yes. Okay. So we do have one question yes. um, that, that we'll get to. So, and I'm going to answer this question like this. Um, so remember earlier I said, let's, we're going to talk about honest box. Yes. And so uh -huh. one of the things that we learned that, um, that our, that our counselors told us that you have to be able to have real conversations and you have to be able to share, um, what you feel, how mm -hmm. you're feeling. And you just have to be able to do that because if you never get to the part where, um, you don't touch the deep things that, 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 that hurt you or in everything else or how you feel, your relationship is always going to stay surface. And so what me and my wife established was called honest box. And so with honest, she's laughing because she hates it. But what, <laughs> what honest box is, is that this is the time that we get a chance to share our real thoughts. That's right our real feelings, um, you know, uh, um, our real hurts, and we express them to the other person, mm -hmm. and then we express it to the other person. The rule is that the other person <laughs> can't get mad. You can't get upset. No, you can't. You cannot walk out, and you can, I mean, and you have to listen. You can show emotion by tears or, like, you know, 
your facial expressions. Mm-hmm. We don't have a problem with that. Right. But you just can't cut the person off. Right. Flip out. Right. Get mad, want to fight, want to throw stuff. Mm-hmm. It actually helps you to mellow your temper down. Yes. Because my mom was hyper. She 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 had a temper. My dad had a temper. So of course, you know, they produce temper temperamental children Mm -hmm. you know and it's nothing wrong with being a temperamental person Mm -hmm. the the issue is you have to know how to control your temper yes you know and i feel like that actually i laugh about it because in the beginning i did not like it Mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't because i felt like i was i really had to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. i actually had to take off all of the layers Mm -hmm. of 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 things uh shields that i was placing Mm -hmm. around my heart wow and placing around the sensitive parts of my heart Mm -hmm. i mean and to the point of a sensitive touch because if you touch something that thing really hurts so and i felt like with the honest box i actually had to crack that shell open and actually let you see how my heart really beats and um for some of you who don't know i love hospital hospital shows and I was in school for, um, I was at Harris and one of my professors, she said to me, she said, Naditra, you should have been a surgeon. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, no, come on. She said, no, Naditra, you should have been a surgeon. She said, because you have the hands, you have the stomach, you have the ability to know how to, to, (laughs) to deal with the heart and to deal with the things that are inside the body that are not exposed, that our skin actually covers up the organs, the major organs. And the Holy Ghost let me know. He said, you are a surgeon. He said, but you're a surgeon in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're not a surgeon in the natural, but you are a surgeon in the spirit because you know how to get to the bleed. Okay, so what happens is if you happen to bleed internally, I can always tell when someone is bleeding internally because there's always bruising around the area. Mm-hmm. and it begins to turn different colors yes. and I had a lot of bleeds in my heart I had a lot of bleeds in my body mm-hmm. and what was happening is I was covering them up mm-hmm. I had bruises mm-hmm. you could see the bruises but because I knew how to put on the proper makeup mm-hmm. because I knew how to put on the proper clothes and the proper hair mm-hmm. to cover up my scars and all my bruises mm-hmm. no one paid me any attention Wow. And this is the first time I ever been with someone that actually wanted me to be honest with them and, and they could be honest with me. And I knew that after them being honest with me about myself, they wouldn't tear up my heart. Yes. They wouldn't tear up. And a woman, one thing about men, they have, you have to understand a woman needs to feel safe. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was one of the the things that I never felt in any relationship that Mm -hmm. means marriage or anything I never felt safe Mm -hmm. so I always had that temperamental spirit that temper and that I'll kill you type of spirit Mm -hmm. that would rest on me Mm -hmm. because if you was coming for me baby somebody was going to die but it wasn't going to be me (laughs) you know what I'm saying it wasn't going to be women I have to be honest with you you want to feel safe then you need to be able to tell your spouse, honey, I need to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to tell my husband because actually two weeks before I had told you, um, before I even flipped out on you, Mm -hmm. I had got almost attacked Mm -hmm. at work in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. because I cleaned buildings and we were cleaning buildings and I was in a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. This man came out of the cornfield. Mm-hmm. And anybody that know about children of the corn from 1980 <laughs> yes <laughs> the okay. children of the corn was crazy mm-hmm. and the man came out of the cornfields trying to attack me and two other women because they they were all over the place somebody had to be level-headed and i was the driver i had to make sure get in the car come on let's get out of this situation so it it scared me and i literally was frantic frantic and i needed somebody to make me safe and you yes. made me feel you know after i fussed at you but right. i had to kind of you had to let me know to calm down mm-hmm. and tell me the real reason why you acting like right. that right so to answer your question <laughs> is that how do you get 
um, someone who is 90% quiet or silent on... Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a yeah, who, who, who asked that kind of question? Who asked that kind of question? Oh, oh okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I got you. Hold on, did, where did, I, I, I oh, saw them. Oh, you saw it? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So in order to get the person... Because this happens in, you know, whether the, the man is silent or whether the woman is silent, you have to have that, you have to give that opportunity for that person to be able to speak. So a lot of times, you know, so I, because I'm a man, I can speak for a man. So, you know, first of all, I don't believe that a man can win an argument over no woman, period. That's just number one. Why do you think that? Uh huh? Why do you think that? Because when I don't know, y'all got I don't know, y'all y'all we, we got good clap back skills. Yeah, y'all yeah, y'all clap back real good. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> so I per and maybe just because I'm not an argumentative kind of person. I think that's what it is, baby, because you're not. You're not an argumentative kind I'm, of person. Yeah, I'm not He's an not. argument. So I can't I can't win in the if me and my wife was a bust on an argument right now, he I would make a win. terrible lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he not a good lawyer. <laughs> so, but um, because uh, I know, as for me as a man, if you don't allow me to be able to speak or be able to share my feelings or share my thoughts, I'm just going to instantly shut down. Mm -hmm. And so I had to tell my wife a lot of times, if you really want me to talk to you, Come on, you and actually me. want me to, yes, you know, you say what I want to say or tell you how I'm feeling, because I'm the kind of person I'm just gonna let you say what you want to say. Just mm -hmm. keep on talking. Mm -hmm. I don't even care because, you know, because if I say something mm -hmm. back, and then I mean you can rebuttal, but then you can't rebuttal and be like, eh, nah, 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 nah. And, okay, well you read the, that ain't what it is. You just want to. I just okay, you know, no, you know, I'm trying to talk to you, but you don't want me to talk back. So, <laughs> wait a minute, so he's really talking honest, honestly. <laughs> this is an honest box moment, honestly. Oh, honestly. You're experiencing it right now as we speak. <laughs> Well, because wait. that is, I'm telling you, that has been an honest box moment. Like, and she, I mean, my oh, wife would be going, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And, and <laughs> you don't want to say nothing? You don't want to say nothing? You don't want to say nothing? Did I say something? No, no, that, no, no, no. I don't know, understand. And this, that, that ain't what it is. That ain't what. <laughs> okay, stop. Don't tell everything. Oh, I'm telling everything. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> telling on me, Lars. That was the old me. That was the Oh, that is the old you. That's the old you. Oh, yes. Oh, no more baking gases. I mean, no, all things are new. Yes, new furniture, new. No. <laughs> Yes, we did. We had six months worth of counseling when we were dating and then six months um, of counseling when we got engaged because we needed to learn if we were going to hit that, that step of actually getting engaged. We mm -hmm. see people and we, and it was so funny because we had to sustain from so much stuff. Mm -hmm. We had to sustain from sexual activity. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't like to hear that. But that's the truth. Because what we and our counselors made sure that we understood, you don't want to base your relationship off of a sexual healing and feeling, mm -hmm. touching and poking. Because I'm going to tell you something. That stuff can be so fantastic. Mm -hmm. But when it all boils down, if that's all y'all really have, you mm -hmm. really don't have a relationship. You don't have a marriage. You don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So why are you together? You know right. what I mean? So they told us that in order for all of this to work, Y'all got to sustain from any type of sexual activities. Mm -hmm. You have to limit mm -hmm. what you say to people. Y'all can't put nobody in your relationship. I'm going to tell y'all right now. The reason why me and my husband still together today, I'm going to tell you a small little secret. Just a teeny little, little, little secret. Keep people out your business. Mm -hmm. Keep folks out of your business. Mm -hmm. If I got a problem with my man, I go to my man. And don't be posting it all on social media either. 
<laughs> oh, she about to snatch my hair I, out. I was getting, <laughs> okay, see, I, I was, um, I had a little, it was a little alfalfa. Yeah. Mom, was oh, 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 you know, you was going to use the light down my alfalfa? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. <laughs> this is the kind. This is how we react to one another. Okay, so yeah, I because when I get excited, because when he says something really good, I normally hit him. Yeah. Or I, I get grab punched. his hair. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, because yeah. it's that good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because my husband is he's really deep. He don't realize how deep he is, but he's really deep. <laughs> and I, I really like that about him. You cannot post things on social media. One thing about me and my husband, I don't think we have ever ever. Ever, ever, never. ever. First of all, we ain't never go to nobody else about our relationship. Mm -mm. Now we had people that we felt comfortable talking yeah. to. We have accountable people that people hold us accountable. Right. Accountability partners. That's right. what we call them. Mm -hmm. We do have people that hold us accountable for our actions. Sometimes you do have to talk to somebody to say, "Do you think I was wrong, mm -hmm. or do you think I should have said?" And accountability partners, if you want to find one, you better find a person that's going to be honest with you. They're going to say, girlfriend, I love you. And I, you my homegirl, but baby girl, you was wrong. You shouldn't have talked to that man like that. Mm -hmm. Or man, you shouldn't have talked to your wife like that. That mm -hmm. was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. However, your accountability partners must be able to hold you accountable. Got to tell you the truth. And, and, and y'all still got to be friends afterwards. Okay. Yes. So that's what accountability partners were. Now, so our mentors and our um, therapists, our, our marriage counselors were our accountability partners, our mentors, and our counselors all in one. Okay? They yes. did all three of those things for us. Yes. And you can be able to see them next Friday. Yes! They're going <laughs> to be on. the Daily Gospel Network. Yes, the highlight. One thirty. I just, you know, um, shameless yes. plug. Yeah. Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you put it out there. Exactly. Because they taught us how to communicate. Now, we know how to talk. Both mm -hmm. of us know how to talk, but we didn't know how to communicate. There you go. Communication and talking is one thing. See, I can talk. That means he can talk and he just going to be sitting there. Mm -hmm. he, I, he can talk to me and I'll just be sitting there. But communication is a give and take. Like he talks. Mm -hmm. I listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. And vice versa. You know, that's what communication is. And, and it's hard. It's something that you really have to work on. It's something that it, it really is a daily step. And when y'all bump heads on certain things, mm -hmm. you know, you, as much as it flares up in you that want to cut that person off and say something, you know, you have to allow that person to finish speaking exactly what they want to say, because if not, you're, you're not going to come to an understanding. And so I, I want to say, I want to say that every single thing that we've encountered so far, mm -hmm. um, I believe that we've fully talked about it. I don't think we've never left anything hanging for too long. No, they taught us to, we were always taught to put a time limit on stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, one time um, we had just gotten married. We were only like a month into our marriage and something happened. I'm not going to go too deep into the story because um, the young lady is not here to defend herself number one and number two number two she has passed on so i don't want to ever make it seem like she was a horrible person because she wasn't a horrible person mm -hmm. this is why upbringing is really important guys yes. her upbringing was totally different from our upbringing yes. and sometimes when people come into your life and they accept you as a family member they expect for you to always be there but they fail to remember that sometimes you have a family of your own mm -hmm. and at the time my husband was trying to create his own family and she wanted to be included in creating his own family and a lot of our communication lines I do believe kind of got twisted and she felt like she should have, it should have been Shannon, me, my daughter and her and her child. And Dietra just wasn't having it at the time because I was still trying to get to know Shannon and my daughter was trying to get to know Shannon mm -hmm. and we needed time to get to know one another. And we really did not have time to add us two other people into our relationship at the time. But make a long story short, um, we got into a, a very huge argument and it was really, really, really big. And words were exchanged, things were done. 
And at the end of the day, she went her way, we went our way. So when my husband dropped her, dropped her off <clears throat> um, to, to be in a safer place, he came back home and he said to me, he started crying. He said, I thought that this was it for us. He said, I thought you were going to leave me. And I had to reassure my husband at that time that I don't care what we go through. Mm-hmm. Nadichra Dawn Patrick, before I became a young, mm-hmm. Nadichra Dawn Patrick was not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Not because I took my vows so serious. It had nothing to do with no vows. I was in strong like of this man. Yes. I saw my life turn around in a matter of weeks, days, and months, hours, and seconds with this man. So it was going to take more than just that one blow to knock me out and tell me I'm done. So from that day forth, because I made the commitment to go in and stay in this marriage, and he made the commitment to go in this marriage and stay in this marriage, this is how come we still together today. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we made that commitment. The moment that one person in that relationship says, oh, yes. I am done. I can't do this no more. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what you better go do? Go find yourself a good daggone lawyer. Yeah. And draw them some daggone papers. Because I'm going to tell you something. Your marriage is over. Yes. Because it takes two to stay together. Yes. It takes two to marry. And it takes two to stay together. Yes. If one of y'all don't want to work it out, it's not going to work out. That's true. I don't care what nobody say. Can't, oh, it can be repaired. Nope. Because whoever said. I'm done, has already checked out. Yeah. They checked out already. Mm -hmm. They finished with this marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to say something to the women out there that are um, single or who are dating or whatever you want to call yourself doing, whatever it is. Don't be no fool. Don't be no fool. Please don't. If he leaves you once, he going to keep leaving. He going to keep leaving. If he leaves you once, he's going to keep leaving. You have to make a conscious decision that I'm okay by myself right now until God sends me the right person. Yes. You cannot keep making, you cannot give something to a person and make them think that that's going to bribe them to stay in the house with you. You can, but girls, let me tell y'all something. Stop having these kids for these men. Oh God, this right yeah. here, this right here, right here. Y'all think that sex going home. I, I just have to let you know. Sex ain't going to keep no man home with you. That's right. I don't care how good your poom poom is. I don't care how much you lay it down. It ain't going to keep him home. I don't care how many times you get pregnant with his babies. He's not going to stay with you. If he does not stay committed with the first one, why do you think you're going to stay committed with the second and the third and the fourth one? Stop having these babies with these men who don't want you. They want a free ride. That's all they want, but they don't want to stay. You cannot have a baby thinking that's going to keep that man straight. If he goes the first time, he's going to go again. That's right. And I keep telling you, young girls, if the man hasn't married you, y'all been together five years, and he still hasn't married you, put a ring on your finger, but hasn't walked you down the aisle. Let me tell you something. He ain't going to marry you. He's not going to marry you. That's just the bottom line. Because it don't take no six years, 10 years to figure out if she's still the one. That's right. My husband told me we had only been dating and talking. We really was just like talking and getting to know one another for a few, a few weeks. You invited me to the first, um, we went, we, it was a wedding. A husband, a husband and wife, they were having two weddings. They had one for the church and they had one for their um, close friends and family. Mm -hmm. Shannon happened to get invited to both. So Shannon said, I want you to come the first Sunday with me so you can come to the wedding. I was at that wedding and I cried the whole service. I'm not a cry, but I cried that whole service because I said, God, that's what I want. I want real love. That's all I asked God for was a real, a real, a real situation. (laughs) And then The second week, I came back, Shannon and I went to the wedding. That same day, later on that same day, you remember what you said to me? (laughs) Yes, I did. He turned to me and he said, I'm going to marry you. And I looked at him, I said, man, don't you know what my lifestyle was? Do you know what I just been through? I have been through a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And 
tell them what else you had said to me. I don't know if you remember how you were saying after a certain amount of time that my heart was going to, I was going to be okay with um, my insecurities. Yeah. So I, what I said, was, I said <clears throat> 10 years after us being married, um, that I, that those things that hurt you and stuff like that, I said that, you know, those, those things are going to be no more because yeah um because I said listen I said I don't I don't have the houses and the cars and the riches in the land but what I do have is love and I said and, and if you're willing to receive that love I said we can make it through anything yeah and so you know, I didn't believe him this is like two weeks after we was dating yeah I didn't believe him because I was like dude I just got a divorce I don't want to hear about no marriage I'm trying to get my life right I need to get a better job just chill out and we were inseparable. We only had been dating for two weeks. When I tell you yeah. inseparable, I never forget when I tried to tell you I wasn't coming. And I would see him at church because he was telling me to come over on the weekend. He said, I want you to come over and move. Um, I have a place for you to stay. You're going to stay with my friends on the weekend so you can be available for service and make sure you get a chance to embrace everything that we got going on. Because when I tell you, Shannon... T- Open my eyes to a whole new world. <laughs> I felt like we was on Disney on ice because my husband actually opened my eyes to a whole new world. This is why we were dating. Mm-hmm. And I never forget, I said, uh, I'm, I'll see you Sunday. I'm not going to come over this weekend. Shannon E. Young was not having it. I think it was on a Thursday. Something I, like that. I had told you that. And he chewed me out so bad. And then after he finished chewing me out, he said, and I better see you at that train station when you get off work. And sure enough, I set the train. <laughs> I set the train. Turn my foot down. <laughs> I set the train station. He said, because, you know, I guess he felt like I was trying to run away from him. I don't know what you felt. And I wasn't trying to run away. I just couldn't believe somebody really liked me. That was my thing. I just couldn't believe somebody liked me because mm-hmm. my whole entire life, just going through different relationships, I was always the giver. Mm-hmm. I never received too much. And when I did receive, you know, it was always like the bare minimum. And wow. I, you always gave me something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Every week was like an adventure. Every moment was an adventure for me. Mm-hmm. I cried so much. I cried for a whole year in our marriage counseling and our pre-marriage counseling because I had never felt so loved by people before. Um, Even with our counselors, they were very honest with us. They were straight up with us. They attacked all my insecurities. I mean, from childhood insecurities to adulthood insecurities. And I cried because I had been married twice before and I never experienced the the foundation, the strong foundation before. Mm -hmm. It's just... I, I, our marriage has been a true experience. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I have too. Yeah. Do we have any more I, questions? Um, only thing I did see is that um, Minister Henry is asking for prayer. Yes. Um, please pray for me to start beginning uh, caring and understanding more. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, that is. How did you start caring? Shannon, how did you start caring for me? Like, I don't, I won't just say for me, but just because it was for me and for Sierra. Like, hmm. you have a daughter now. Mm-hmm. You, you've you been a foster father yes. and you've only had boys. Mm-hmm. And you guys have an unreal relationship. I get jealous. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I get a little jealous because <laughs> him and Sierra have an amazing you guys have an amazing bond Mm -hmm. like I just love it I think it's so sweet I it reminds me of my father just Mm -hmm. being a great father Mm -hmm. that's all Mm -hmm. how did you do that you know what um honestly I I, I guess because it just comes so natural I don't know like I've always just been a caring and understanding person Mm -hmm. um you know, I think that's just, that's a heart thing. It's, it's, it's a heart thing that you really have to really, really pray and ask God um, for that kind of 
caring and understanding and love um, just for the simple fact is that, um, you know, I, I don't know if, if it's actually upbringing or not, you know, I, I guess you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes as well mm -hmm. to try to see where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it, you know, um, but I think that's just something that's just natural for me. Um, when it comes down to caring and under, I, I try to understand everyone, you know, um, some things probably not meant for me to understand. Um, but yeah, I, it's just something that comes natural. And I guess the other thing is that, so when I started beginning to come into Christ, you know, um, we should be the examples of Christ on earth. Um, as much as possible we are ambassadors Ooh, um, on, on earth <laughs> I we, felt that thing he shifted we, on that we are, we are kingdom ambassadors here on earth so you know we're supposed to exemplify Christ as much as possible <laughs> I know I feel like preaching right now. We're supposed to exemplify. We're supposed to, um, as much as possible, be Christ-like. That's the reason why they call us Christians, because the word mm -hmm. Christians means to be Christ-like. So if I'm trying to be Christ-like, then that means I have to take on the characteristics of Christ. And because I'm taking on the characteristics, the characteristics of Christ, I saw that he loved people. Mm -hmm. And that was, to me, looked natural. He cared for people. So to me, that looked natural. Come on, come he on. understood things and situations. So to me, that became natural. And so for a whole year, for a whole two years straight almost, I believe I prayed the scripture, let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, so I prayed for the mind of Christ. And I believe what ended up happening is that, you know, God infiltrated my mind yeah. and gave me the ability to really think the way that, because, you know, part of my prayer was that, you know, hey, let me think the way that you think. Come let on. me talk the come way on, that you on. think. Let me walk the way that you walk. Let me, I mean, and that's just something I did for a whole yes. year, two years straight. And so I believe that's what really helped me to be able to find that understanding um, learning how to care um even the more and so you know so i encourage you is that you know hey if if it's something that you're experiencing um that you're having a hard time with um when it comes down to love when it comes down to loving yourself because i believe that christ loved himself so if i'm trying to be, be an example um of christ and i know that he loved himself and he loved god so yeah, so just begin to pray that scripture. Let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus and, and allow God to be able to take over your mind, take over your heart, take over your thoughts. And with that takeover comes wisdom, knowledge, yes. understanding. Come on, come on. And so, yeah. You know, you, you brought uh, a great point when it pertained to your mind. So I want to go back to this question. How do you handle things when the response is silence 90% of the time? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You can't make somebody change. Uh, there it is. Yep. Yep. Now you preach it. Go ahead. You can't make <laughs> somebody turn left when you really, you know, you can't make them turn left when mm -hmm. they don't want to turn left. Right. You you can't change them because that's manipulation. Right. But, but I can change, change myself. Me. Yeah. Now let me tell you something. What you can't for a person who's 90% silent. So what you need to do is you need to tap that person right up on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And just ask one simple question. Mm -hmm. Do you want this marriage to work? That's, that's it. it. Don't go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Don't try. Don't, and matter of fact, don't even expect the answer right then and there. Let mm -hmm. them marinate on that thing. Mm -hmm. Just let them marinate. You stop talking. Mm -hmm. Cause see, you not only doing okay, so 90%, you doing the talking 90% of the time, and right. he's shutting down the 10%. Right. So now the roles need to change. Mm -hmm. You do the 10 mm -hmm. and let him do the 90. That's it. 
That's right. Now, how you get him to do the 90s, the way you get him to do the 90s is you shut the heck up. There you go. Shut up. Don't yeah. say nothing. You cannot change a man. You cannot change a woman. You cannot make nobody turn around that don't want to turn around. You can't make nobody love you that don't want to love you. All you can do is ask the question, do you want to make this marriage work? That's it. And say yes or no answer. There's no maybes. There's no but. There's right. no gray. It's black or it's white. Right. Let them know, listen, take your time. Um, um, you know, for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. And you say, well I, well, I don't know how long it's going. Then you put a time limit on. That's right. You have 24 hours or you have 48 hours to let me know. Do you want this marriage to work? It's a yes or no answer. And walk away. For the next 48 hours, don't talk about it. Don't you try to make them talk. Don't even hint about don't it. Don't hint around. Don't, mm -hmm. honey, talk about the grocery list, but don't talk about that list. Because let me tell you something. If he wants it to work, right. it ain't going to take him 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And if it does take him 48 hours, he's going to come back with a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. That's just it. You can't make somebody be in a marriage that don't want to be in a marriage. You cannot make nobody love you who don't want to love you. Sometimes you got to just get quiet. I had to learn that. Get, shut, shut that lip. This is why I told um, a young lady last week, I said, don't no real man want a Lucy Goose woman. And I don't mean Lucy Goose in the body. I'm talking about Lucy Goose with your tongue. Mm -hmm. Talk too much. Never shut up. Always got something to say. Like my husband said, you want me to respond, but every time I respond, you jumping over top of me. But then ain't no need for me to respond because all I'm going to do now is shut, shut down. I'm going to shut down. I'm not going to be there. So that, that's what the Holy Ghost had to teach Niditra. Mm -hmm. Shut it up and let him respond. Mm -hmm. Give him time to respond. Give him the opportunity to open up his mouth. Yes, I'm a strong black woman. He doesn't take that away. He doesn't take independence away from me. He told me straight up from the get-go. He said, let me tell you something now. We're going to work real well together. I said, okay. He said, because you're going to get a job. And you <laughs> you going to get a job and keep a job. And I'm going to get a job and have a keep. I'm going to have a job and keep a job, too. Yes. That's how we're going to work well together. Mm -hmm. He said, let me tell you right now. I need your help. And I need you to work. <laughs> Am I lying? No, not lying. Okay. That, that's exactly you, what I said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he told me. Yeah. Yeah. He told me up front what he expected of me. I had a choice. It was a yes or no thing. So he pushed me to want to work hard. And like he told me, he said, I don't care what kind of work. There, there was a time when I was working, but I wasn't making enough money. And then there was a time when we just didn't know what kind of money I was going to make. Remember that? Mm -hmm. We was in a position where he didn't know what kind of paycheck mm -hmm. I was going to get. Neither did I. But she worked because that's why I said, I said, I just need a little help with the bill. Right. So know? that's so what he, I, yeah, that's I, what he I told don't me. care what kind of work you do. That's what he told me. He said, I don't care what kind of work you do. He said, and I, he said, it's not about how much you make. He said, I just want you to be consistent in what you make. Mm -hmm. He had to teach me that too. He said, be consistent in what you make. So I know I can work with that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I became. I became consistent. Then, then when it started going back to, we still didn't know. Mm -hmm. He said, baby, mm -hmm. go find another job. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. And then one day, because I was cleaning. This is how this business started. Because I was cleaning. Right. I was already cleaning somebody else. I was doing home care. clean. I was doing, my husband turned to me. He said, why don't you make this a job? Make this a business. I said, oh, Shannon. I said, I could. So from 2017, we worked very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And then 2020, was it 2019? The end of 2019, going into 2020. Yes. Yeah. God yeah. opened up a door. Yes. Woo, glory to God. And <laughs> she out. made them swing open. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. It got so bad. Wait a minute. It, it recently has picked up to the point where we had to turn business down because once again we come in contact with people that don't like to work sorry so that's that's and we can't clean all these but we got to work tonight mm -hmm. we got to work tomorrow mm -hmm. people say oh when do y'all work seven days a week when do y'all try working? to 
try to keep our weekends free. We try to no, keep No, we Sunday. try to keep Sunday free. Because <laughs> we always work with on Saturdays. We pretty much always work on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, we try to keep Sundays free. Yeah. But um, that's not possible. So make a long story short, you cannot make a person... You cannot make a person do something that they don't want to do. So to that person who wrote that, I just wanted to let you know, if he does not want to give you the 90%, you give him the 10, which is keep your mouth closed. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing. Tap him on the shoulder, ask him, does he or she, whoever this person is, hey, listen, do they want, y y y do you want to make this marriage work? It's a yes or no. You got 48 hours to let me know, yes or no. And if it's a no, don't be angry with yourself. It's nothing that you did wrong. Yes, that's true. Just because he is not the end of the world, ladies. Men, it's not the end of the world. Because that person doesn't want, a lot of times it's their upbringing. Mm -hmm. And if a person hasn't been raised properly, you are not his mama. You are not, you Come are on. not her daddy. Come you on. cannot raise grown folk. That's right. Why do I have to raise grown folk? You should have already been raised already. That's true. And if you're not raised properly, you know, go get a daggone mentor so you can learn. So you can learn. Let somebody teach you. Keep your mouth shut so somebody can teach you something. But you can't, you can't raise a grown man. You can't raise a grown woman. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. And then if, even if it is your fault, it's okay that it is your fault. Okay? Go get some help. Yes, that's all. Go I'm get therapy. Yes. Because you need to figure out what's going on with you. So when you get married again or get into another relationship with somebody, you won't re keep redoing this whole cycle again. You got to get a you got to get a, a handle on your emotions. You got to get a handle on your thoughts. Let me tell you something. One of the things that the devil likes to do, he comes in to kill and steal and destroy, but he starts with your daggone mind first. Come on, teach it. That's it right. starts in your mind. If you say, I'm running for my life, and you go like this, turn, you see how I'm turning around, mm -hmm. grabbing back the past? Mm -hmm. How you going to run forward and you turn this way? Come on. How you supposed to drive a car and you turn this way? Mm -hmm. You can't move forward, turn somewhere else. Yes. If you're going to move forward, leave the past mm -hmm. right here in the past. If you need help, then say, listen, I'm moving forward, but I need help on clarity so I won't go back. So I won't go back to this thing. You know, it's, Black people got a problem with therapy. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all need to cut that mess out. It's nothing wrong with sitting on somebody's couch mm -hmm. and telling somebody your problems because you everybody mm -hmm. needs therapy. Oh, well, absolutely. Everybody needs therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made a post on Facebook. I said, some of y'all need more than just Jesus. Some of y'all need... A counselor. Y'all need, need a therapist. You need a therapist. And it's all right. It's and all it's all right. right. It's not it's wrong cool. with it. Listen, we have our mentors who are like therapists to us. And every now and then I gotta call her Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> oh my she be like, I did you a tongue. I'd be like, girl, I got something to tell you. And I'd be like, how do I handle this? How do I deal with it? Mm-hmm. How do I talk to my husband? And then she'll tell me, Deidre, because you know how you are. You got to say it in the calm voice. See, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to tell nobody about me. Now, Deidre knows how to talk about herself. I don't need nobody to tell nobody about me. I can tell you about me first. Because my husband will tell you. Because I don't, I don't take no, because you know what it is? Because I have been around users my entire life. I've been around well. people who've used me, abused me. I have been, I, I manipulate. I'm talking about from grown folk, church folk, kingdom workers, non-workers, prophetic, not profit, prophet nobodies, prophet is somebody. I, I've been through it all. So I, I, I can smell a rat when I see one. Okay, I, I, it's a rat in the room. It's coming out somewhere. It's. I, sm I see some droppings and I don't know, I, I, I see it. So I, I, I sense these things. So, so what happens is, and because I sense them, I have a cut mentality. My pastor made fun of me last week because he said, <laughs> tell your, he told Shane, said, tell your wife I got a weed whacker over here if she need one. <laughs> I cuts in a minute. My husband will tell you, oh, oh, you wanna, oh, you wanna make up stories about me? No problem. I just cut you right on off. Delete. I don't fight with people no more. I just delete you. Oh, 
you want to make fun of me? No problem. You think everything I post is funny? No problem. Delete. So some of y'all, I deleted you already. I deleted you already. Some of y'all are blocked already. Some of y'all may not know it. Call me and see what happened. I, I blocked you. Yeah. <laughs> My husband tell you, I don't fuss with nobody no more. I used to fuss. I used to go back and forth. I used to fight. Oh, I used to do all of that stuff. My husband tell you, I don't do that stuff no more. Uh, it's called delete. Mm -hmm. Delete. People on my page, they come on my page and they say disrespectful things. You know what I do? Up, uh, I go right to the uh, the edit button. Ooh. And they give you options and they say you can delete. <laughs> I delete the comment. Yep, I delete your comment. Yep, and then I go in <laughs> and I block you or I delete you. Yep, I do all of that. Yep, I don't pass. <laughs> I so happy. This is progress. Yep. I don't, I don't care no more. And I have I, I have that that zero mentality. And it's not because I'm trying to hurt anybody. It's because I refuse to let you hurt me anymore. And I refuse to carry your pain, your pressure, your anger. Because see, a lot of times you got to remember about hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. See, when you hurt, you mad at everybody. So you just want to hurt. I told my husband the other day about a person. I said, because they so depressed. What happens is one thing about a depressive person, they want everybody around them to be depressed. Yeah. And, and I tried to help this person, but this person gave me all the excuses that they wanted to give me. And the Holy Ghost told me, he said, they're giving you excuses because they don't want no help. They like being this way. Mm -hmm. They like the attention that depression brings them. You got to be careful with that. You got people that are around you purposely because they want, they like spurring, they, they, they're, they're hurt on you. Mm -hmm. They like they like the fact that you can carry their weight for, for them. Mm -hmm. They like for you to carry their weight. They like for you to carry their upsetment. So what they do, they deposit this mess on you and they expect for you to carry. That's why I told the Holy Ghost said, stop letting people put their trash in your basement. Tell them to put their own trash out. I, I had something in my basement the other day and we had just came home from work. And man, I went in that basement and I saw my stuff on the, on the other side. And I saw my stuff falling and they stuff was intact. And it was taking up my, I told my husband, I said, you don't get on that daggone phone and tell so-and-so to come get their stuff out my basement because I don't have no room for my stuff. It's going on the trash. Did I not? Mm -hmm. I said, and there's no disrespect, no harm done to nobody. But the moment that you crowd, crowd up my space that I pay for monthly and your stuff is in my space and it's all fine and my stuff is falling over, we got a problem. Yep. And Dietrich's here to solve it. It's called put it outside in trash. Yes. I'm sorry. You good. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't play. I, when you're a healed person when you get healed it's like you don't let nobody mess with your sanity because mm -hmm. i have allowed people to mess with my sanity for years yeah. i've allowed people to destroy i keep y'all hear what i said i allow the people to do this to me mm -hmm. i allow people to talk mm -hmm. and the negativity got in my ear gate mm -hmm. and it just didn't go on one ear and out the other it stayed Mm -hmm. And I replayed that stuff in my brain over and over again. I allowed people to tell me that I wasn't talented. I was with this uh, um, uh, this, this play. Mm -hmm. And they used to make fun of me. And they used to talk about even the director. Hey. <laughs> used, to talk, used to talk about me. Yeah, they would be in, we would be in rehearsal. They texting about me. They would, <laughs> about me. And it used to disturb my progress mm -hmm. when we were rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw one of the persons on it. That's why I'm saying this. I'm let them know I know. Thank you. Um, so it used to disturb my progress. And it used to put me in a position where I couldn't produce like I needed because I was so focused on what they were saying about me mm -hmm. that it overtook me. I digested their words. Mm -hmm. I let it eat at me. It was like a um, flesh eating disease. You know what a flesh eating disease is? It eats you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Negative mm -hmm. words are like flesh eating diseases. 
They eat you from the inside out. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I allowed it to do. So I, I didn't make it far as I could have because I allowed those words and those things to overtake me. Wow. And because now that I'm stronger, not anymore. That's amazing. I can't. Wow. 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 So I think we just about covered all of our topics for tonight. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't see any other questions or any of that thing. Hi, Penny. I love you, honey. Well, you know what? Every time I see that, I, don't, <laughs> I know it's family, but I'm like, I don't know who it is. I know because you see her under Bernadette. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Kia. God bless you, Kia. Pastor, Pastor Nard, God bless you. Yes. Yes. So we want to just say thank you to each and every person that has yeah. um, come on and hung out with us with our uh, family and love and uh, family, family and love. What's love it? and family. Come on. <laughs> help, help me out. You know, I want it down now. Yes. Love and family month. I praise God for this man right here. This this man has been such um, an amazing husband. Honey, I just want to say thank you. Amen. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for respecting me. Thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to life again, to which allowed me to fall in love. And I didn't even fall in love. I I just wind up loving you because I don't want to fall into anything mm -hmm. because then a part of me may not be able to get back up. So I didn't fall. I just walked into love. Aww. And I thank you for allowing me to love you. Thank you for just just being the man of my dreams. You really have pushed me. Um, thank you for pushing my talent. Thank you for pushing the anointing that mm -hmm. rests in me because mm -hmm. you've been a friend mm -hmm. and you push the anointing in me. You let me know that I'm a powerful woman of God. And yes. even when I don't think I am, even when I don't think I have made an impact on people, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. even when I don't think I can do it, mm -hmm. you'll always make sure you let me know in some type of way I can do it. And you make my dreams come. God has given you the anointing in your hands mm -hmm. and in your mind to allow, to for you to, to, to uh, help me make the dreams that I've always wanted to come true. Wow. You know, I've never had a man to help me oh, make my dreams come eyes. true. Aww. I wanted to do so much. Mm -hmm. And you have pushed me to do it. Mm -hmm. You have helped me. And you've allowed me to do it. You don't look at it as robbery that I'm taking any shine from you. Yeah. You let me be me, and I appreciate that. You know, I'm goofy, I'm loud. Yes, yes. I'm colorful. Um, yes, I love the colorful. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Get you some tissue. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate you allowing me just to be uh, Naditra. Thank you. Yes. You allow me to be myself all the time, and um, you don't fight me on that. Yes. And I appreciate that. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you. You're yeah. a great husband. I mean, even when we have our disagreements, we don't argue, we don't fuss, we don't fight, we have disagreements. Yes. Because sometimes it's a, a slight communication uh, breakdown or sometimes mm -hmm. it's just uh, not the correct. We say the same thing, but we say it differently. Yes. That's something that yes. we've been we've been doing a lot of. We've been doing a lot of that, yes. Saying the same thing, but mm -hmm. saying it differently. Yes. But I thank you for your patience. Yes. You are a very patient man, a true man of God, because a real man of God going to be patient. Mm -hmm. He's not going to run ahead of you. Mm -hmm. He's going to take up time with you. And I thank you for taking up time with me. Because mm -hmm. you don't have to. You don't mm -hmm. have to. You can, because you're the head of the household. Mm -hmm. So you can make decisions without even consulting me, but because you know that you want me a part of it. And then you know that in order for it to work, Mm -hmm. We both have to be in agreement. Yes. Yes. So you make sure that I'm in agreement with you first. Yes. And you tell me all the time I can't move in this marriage and I can't move in this ministry. Mm -hmm. And you told me before we even started the One Touch Ministry because the One Touch Ministry had already been in existence. Mm -hmm. But because I, in the beginning, I wasn't on the bandwagon with it. Mm -hmm. 
you to I can't move until my wife is on the bandwagon with me yes. because I need her. Yes. You didn't look at it as you didn't need me. You looked at it as I need her. She's an important component to this. Yes. I can't be the man of God that I call myself if I don't have my wife because ministry don't start in the pulpit. Ministry don't start in the church building. Ministry Come does on. not start nowhere around the corner. You can't you can't evangelize on the street until you evangelize at home first. Yes. You got to evangelize at home first. You got to be able you got to be able to lead your family. If your children and your wife won't follow you, man of God, you got a problem. Mm-hmm. Woman of God, you got a problem if your family can't follow you. And I'm talking about the kids that you disowned. I'm talking about the kids that you put up for adoption and now you know where they are. I'm talking about all your children. Yes. All the children that you shoved under the rug. Mm-hmm. Ones you don't want to admit that are yours. But you had sex with the mama to, to uh, accidentally create a child. Mm-hmm. That could create a child. Be a man and go get a DNA test and find out if that's the, yeah, that child is yours. That's right. So you can lead properly. Yes. In ministry, you cannot do. I'm, I'm saying these things because these things are very important. When you're in ministry, you got to be honest with yourself in order for you to be honest with the people. You can't lead people wrong. That's right. Every time you lead, you got got to remember you got souls attached. Mm-hmm. Blood will be on your hands if you don't do right. You got souls attached to ministry. Every time you call, I'm an apostle. Well, you know, apostles, you got souls attached to you. That's right. So if you don't lead your, if you don't know how to do right by by your wife, you can't lead nobody. If you don't take out time with your wife, you can't lead nobody. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to the men of God. I'm not talking to the women of God. I'm talking to the men of God. You want to be this grand famous apostle. You want to be this grand famous pastor. You want to be this grand famous uh, prophet. And you want to you want everybody to flock to you. You better make sure you do right at home first. That's right. Do yes. right at home first. My husband, yes. I didn't understand when he said to me, he said, he said, I'm not worried about a ministry. He said, I want to worry about my marriage. That's he said, right. my marriage, if my marriage ain't intact, ain't no need for me to do no ministry. My exact words, yep. He said, if my wife is not right, I can't do ministry. So you men of God that call yourself men of God, do right by your wives first. Mm-hmm. You can't call yourself a man of God and your eyes is wandering. Oops, you can't call yourself a man of God and you sleeping with the women in the church. You can't right. call yourself a man of God and be on social media. Trying to get a hookup. You can't call yourself a man of God. Into pornography. You cannot call yourself a man of God. And you don't want to own up to your mistakes and, and you're allowing pride to eat at you. And you're trying to take over God's people and manipulate God's people by prophecy. You cannot be called the man of God if you don't want to do right. Ministry starts at home first. Yes. It starts at home before you can go abroad. You can't hit nobody's nation until you do right at home first. Your nation should be your household. Yes. Spend time with your children. You're so busy out here trying to be famous. Spend some time with your kids. Come on. Take your kids to the daggone zoo. Ikandorobosa, have a family day with your children. Ikandorobasa, not just on special occasions. Take your children out. Ikamba cut the grass. Ikandorobosa, shovel the snow. Ikamba randa bashekan. Don't think you're above. Ikandor, don't be so caught up in the holies of holies. Ikandorobabasianda, that you can't find that there's a disconnect in your family. Ika, because everybody got a disconnect somewhere. Ikandorobo shanda rabasa. The only time you recognize anything is when there's a demon flying around. Oh, shit. That's the only time you want to recognize something. I feel a spirit in the house. No, that, that's you. Come on. That's you. You feel your own spirit. Get your life in order. 
Get your life in order. Yanda rabasi and robokosha. Ikamba baba 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 And to the women, ikando raba baba si yanda raba. I ask God to strengthen your mind, ladies. Ikando robosa. Strengthen your emotions. Ikanda raba basa. Put your hormones back in line. Ika randa baba bashi ki araba baka si yanda robosa. Because there's some ashika. There's some things are overreacting. You become baba because you're not getting your way. God said. You can't manipulate nobody to do what you want them to do. Because God said, I'm God. And besides, there is none other. Yes, you may want your marriage to work. Yes, you may want the relationship to work. Yes, you want a man. But you first need to ask God. God, what man do you have for me? God, fix me up. So when the man does come, I'll be ready to receive it. Because see, when you're used to being beat up, when you're used to being talked to rough when you're used to being downplayed ikandaraba you expect every man to do the same thing and when he doesn't do it then he ain't a real man let me tell you something ikaranda baba every man don't have that issue the identity crisis ikandorobo shata Every man doesn't have an identity crisis. You got some men that do know how to talk to a woman soft and actually want to treat her like a real queen. Baba, see, I'm the robot, so he ain't no real man if he ain't pushing me up against the wall. He ain't no real man if he ain't talking rough. Let me tell you, get out of that mentality. You can't roast Shaba, Baba, see, I'm the robot, so I'm the robot, so I'm the robot, so I'm the robot. Women of God, you could deserve better. If you want better, you got to act better first. Come on. You first got to act better. Yes. If you need healing, allow God to heal you tonight. Allow God to heal your mind and your heart tonight. If you want healing tonight, allow God to heal you. Get on your knees. Get on your face and begin to cry out to the Lord and begin to tell God to heal your heart. Heal your heart from what your daddy didn't do. Heal your heart from what your daddy did do. Heal your heart from what your mama accepted. And what your mama didn't accept. Forgive. I hear God saying, you got to forgive. God can't break things for you if you don't forgive. Even with the past, what the man did to you before. I had to forgive my ex-husband. Yes, he cheated. Yes, he downplayed me. Yes, he talked about me. Yes, he did things he ain't had no business. But I had to forgive him. He called And I couldn't make the new man pay for what the old man did. My God from Zion. I couldn't make him pay. I right. couldn't make him pay for that. Come on. I couldn't make him pay for that because then I will be doing a disservice. Then I wouldn't even give him an opportunity to show me real love. Then, and then I'll be still sitting on the sideline asking God to send me real love. Mm. Jeez. Had I made you pay mm -hmm. for what that man did to me, mm -hmm. we would not be together today mm -hmm. because you wouldn't have stood for it. After a while, you would have said, you know what? You just making me pay for what he did. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we got to get together. Yes. We got to get it together. Glory to God. Wow. My God from Zion. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I thank you once again, sir. Yes. Pastor, yes. I thank you. Thank you for being a pastor because you pastored me. Yes. You pastored me. Wow. You pastored me. You pastored you before you pastor the nation mm, mm -hmm. because you are pastor in the nation. Mm -hmm. I prophesy to you today, man of God, wow. for God to bless you over yes. and beyond to fill your hands with plenty, to yes. give you everything that you have already spoke to me about. But even I'm talking then now this is the secret stuff. Mm -hmm. The things that you never shared, huh? no robo sha. Mm. The things that you desire, ikam ba 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 sa. Stuff that you don't want to talk about because you just haven't. It hasn't. It hasn't been in position yet. Ikam do robo sa. But I ask God to put it in your path. Ikam do robo sa. That every barrier, every blockage, every uh, every uh uh uh. A uh, uh, block in the culinary arteries. That God will give you a pathway. That the blood shall flow through. 
and it will flow through with ease. I ask God to heal even the broken pieces that you may not even recognize, even the little fragments. Sometimes we can have a small piece of glass that's broken, that's sitting somewhere in the pocket under something else. That God reveals it to you, and you'll be able to let that thing go and to release it from your life in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to continue to heal him and strengthen him. Make him strong, God. God, I thank you for the man of God, for being a fantastic husband and a fantastic father, God. I ask you to, God, give him the wisdom to continue to lead, not just your people, but to lead his home in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to cover him in the midnight hour. I ask you to cover this man. Fill his hands with plenty. Rain over him, Father. God is pouring onto you more. He said, because I can trust you, say the Lord, because I can trust you. God said, because there's no pride that lives here. Because there's no pride that lives here. Here, you're not trying to be famous. You just want to be successful in God. You have a mentality that wants to be successful in God, meaning that you want to do what God called you to do, and you want to do it in a successful way. You want to do things in decency and order. You want to give God the best. And God said, I'm going to put more into your hands. I'm going to put more into your hands. I'm going to put more into to your hands. I'm going to entrust you with even more. Connections shall come from far and near. People who haven't talked to you in years is going to say, I need you to come out to my ministry to help my ministry because you got an anointing that's sitting on top of you. It's called wisdom. It's like an old man with wisdom. You have a lot of wisdom. You have a, old, a lot of old man wisdom because you've been around a lot of old men. A lot of people had wisdom down to your grandmother. She had a lot of wisdom. Every now and then you may hear some of the things that you, it reminds you some of the things that she told you as a young person. Even down to your mother. Sometimes the reason why they get mad at her because she got a lot of wisdom. She likes to read and educate herself. And sometimes she tells y'all things because she has no other outlet. God said he's going to use you to win over. He can even in your family. You're going to win over the ones that would not come to church because they saw bad examples, but because they see good in you. He can trust you. You're going to win over your family. You are the pastor of the family. You pastor the entire family. Don't be surprised when they call you pastor. I, 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 I know you're my cousin, but I Call me because I need the pastor to speak to me today. I need the pastor to pray over me. I need the pastor's wisdom. I need the pastor's outlook on life. I need the pastor's green light to tell me what to do. I need the pastor's wisdom. God, we just thank you for this man of God. We thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, because he's a great man of God. He kind of robo and even down to your videography. Now, you know, I don't know nothing about this videography stuff that you do. <laughs> but I see God blessing you with an account. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a major account. And it's going to take you off your job. Wow. It's going to take because they're going to need your full time, your 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 experience. They're going to need your your time, mm -hmm. and it, it may start off you doing it when you can, when you can, when you can. Mm -hmm. But the account they're going to ask you, could could you come on full time? Mm 
-hmm. And it's going to have to pull you off your regular job. And God said, and that's when you're going to know you're doing exactly what you wanted to do for many, many years. Mm -hmm. You wanted to do this on a regular basis. And God said, it is going to fund you. It's going to bring home more than what you expect. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring home more than what you expect. It's going to actually override your regular daytime job. And it's going to be consistent. Because that's, that's your issue. You don't mind doing things as long as it's consistent. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. I'm done. Listen, <laughs> I am totally overwhelmed <laughs> right now. I am pray that you guys enjoy everything that was done and said on today. Yes, God. Hey, listen, <laughs> um, we're going to make a quick post. Um, the 28th, <laughs> It's going to be the last day that she can vote for my wife for female worship artists. And so, <laughs> listen, let's get the win. Yes. So let's I'm bring going home to, the win, guys. Yes, let's bring home the win. And so it's at kendrickministries.us. Yeah. I'll make sure that I'll, after uh, we finish, I'll make sure I post the link inside of the chat so that you can click on the chat. And then it will go right on over, take you right on over to um, where to vote. So each category, you have to vote in each category, but there is in there where it says, I don't want to vote for this category. And just go down to a female worship artist, click on Nidetra Young, click submit, and then um, you can actually submit another um, ballot by sending an email. And so the email is at the bottom of, of the thing. So... Hey, listen, I enjoyed this. I, I'm so glad that you did this with me. I'm glad I did it with you. Yes. Oh, and we just want to say one more thing. Go ahead. Um, remember, um, we have uh, a new ministry that is connected with our ministry, and it's called our So Program. Yes. Um, strangers, orphans, and widows. We are be we're gonna um God has put us in a position where we are able to feed families and to clothe them, help them in any way we possibly can. And we praise God because our so ministry is going to be taking off on March 6th. And we're gonna be feeding a hundred families in Jesus' name. 50 yes. to 100 families with food. Um, we're gonna be um just sowing so into them. <clears throat> And if you guys want to partner up with us to sow into the soul ministry so that we can continue to keep sowing into the soul ministry and to help um, feed families, this is free food. So tomorrow we're going out and we're going to be um, handing out our flyers because it's free food for families in the neighborhood. We're going to be in um, uh, Riverside, Riverside next tomorrow we're going to be in riverside tomorrow and we're going to be handing out our flyers to let people know in the neighborhood they can come by and get a free dinner from us um our we're going to do spaghetti mm -hmm. we're going to have uh spaghetti spaghetti we're going to have some to drink we're going to have um um rolls and we're going to have uh um uh, dessert mm -hmm. All of that for the people as well. And we just want to sow into the families and we want people to know that they're not alone. And that's what it's all about. Not feeling that they're alone. We want people to realize that people love them and you don't have to have a price tag. You don't have to have money to pay for this. This is all free food. This money is actually coming out of our pocket. We're buying the food. We're buying everything that needs to be done so we're not it's not that we're not asking and we're it's not that we are asking we're just saying that this is what we're doing god laid upon our hearts to do it and we want to thank god for pastor and prophetess um nard pastor nard and past um prophetess ebony nard because let me tell you something they sold into us to be able to sow in to other people and they told us um and they didn't know that we wanted to open up our own um, boarding home and ministry to help house and, and, and close people. And they blessed us so that now we can bless other people. So we have some things, some of our boarding home is coming very soon. <clears throat> 
but before we get our boarding home, we wanted to start off with just at least having a house where we can feed families, people that can come in and they can get a meal and go home, you know, because sometimes people have a house to live in, but they don't have a hot meal. And that's, that's the problem. They, they have a house to live in, but they just don't have no food. Yes, that's true. So, so I actually just um, put in the comments <laughs> section here. Um, and again, it is called the So Outreach Initiative. And So stands for Strangers, Orphans, and Widows. And so, um, and so the, the Bible teaches us that we ought to um, so to this population of people. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so we came up with So, Strangers, Orphans, and Widows. We came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yo, when he said it, I was done. <laughs> So it's our so outreach initiative. And so, yeah, if you want to give to this initiative, um, make sure that you um, give to One Touch M in our cash app. Every single dollar is going towards our, apps, but, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to update the flyer, but because we got to go get it printed out, then yes, do it tomorrow. But um, I'm going to post the flyer. I'm going to print out the flyer tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And so um and so every single dollar that you give is going towards our March 6th, March 6th, yes. March 6th uh, feeding. We're giving yes. them a spaghetti dinner. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you want to sell, please make sure that That's you it. go to that cash up as well. Um, so let's see. So that take care of the announcement for you being nominated. Yes. Uh, our soul initiative. Yes. As well as check us out next month on the 20th of March. We're doing this one more time. And we're having our mighty men of valor. Oh, I'm gonna say virtual. <laughs> I'll be making up these flyers. I'll be talking about all this stuff. And we talk about these services before oh, yes. every single time. So she'd be like, What we doing? What are we doing again? When is that? <laughs> <laughs> because it'd be so much, and we take Every week we're on the daily gospel. Don't forget we're on the daily gospel. That's right. Every Friday. Woo! 1:30. I'm so excited. I'm telling you, I need an assistant. <laughs> no, for real. I need an assistant and I need a hair and makeup artist. Yeah. Oh, so she's putting it out there. So Contact yeah. her. She needs an assistant and a makeup artist. <laughs> yeah. I prefer for you to do hair and makeup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, March 20th at 5 o'clock p.m., I invited some of my brothers to come and Woo. give a word. Listen. And Mighty Men of Valor, uh, <clears throat> Mighty Men of Valor Virtual Men's Conference. And that is going to be so exciting. Um, myself, mm -hmm. along with Elder Stephen Forte. Stephen Forte is... <laughs> He's know. neck. I love him. <laughs> I, Yes. I told him I ain't going on no more trips with him. <laughs> I went on the trip with him. Oh Lord. Oh, I can't. <laughs> also have a Bible college buddy of mine by the name of Pastor Clay Powell. I can't wait to meet him. Clay yes. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> and then last we got the prophet is gonna be in the his house. Listen. I'm surprised he know he probably at work. The prophet is in his house, yes. prophet Kendall. Rogers, that man, right? We, they, wait, wait, we were only dating. We have been dating a month. We have been dating a month, yes. And he prophesied. He sure us. did. What? We had saw him at an event, mm -hmm. and he said, "I'm only here to be the drummer tonight." <laughs> he said, "But the prophesy is coming out." <laughs> he said, "Y'all get ready to get married." I said, "He huh? said, y'all get ready." I said, "Oh no, that's not true." Okay. <laughs> He said, y'all going to get married. He said, in this hall, it's because we was at a hall. He mm -hmm. said, in this hall, ain't big enough for y'all. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, had true. This, and he ain't never lied because we had we found the biggest hall that they had in New Jersey. And the biggest hall that they had in New Jersey held, what, 500 people? I, I think so. I'm, I don't remember I don't how remember. Many, But we had so many people at that day on reception. Pastor King promises that we had about 250 people at our wedding. I said, the church don't even hold 250 people. We had <laughs> women. I was coming up the steps. And it was people standing on the side. 
out in the hallway. It was people. It wasn't no seat. <laughs> I said, I ain't never had no seat. I'm a passenger. <laughs> there was over 200 <laughs> people at this wedding. And everybody was at that day going home. Yes. So, Shannon, um, yeah, you, you packed it out, babe. That oh was all God. your people. I didn't have that thing. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So let me go ahead and get up here and I'm going to end this live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and viewing. Hallelujah. Thank you again for (laughs) Bishop Rice. Hey, Bishop. Hey, Bishop. Hey, Bishop. Listen, we can't wait to come see y'all in April. We get ready to go back to North Carolina. I'm going to North North Carolina. South Carolina. I'm going to North Carolina next week. Yes. Yes, you are. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.